This is an excerpt of a recent Power Up webinar covering the color tools inside Apple Final Cut Pro. Hi, my name is Larry Jordan. In this short video tutorial, I'll show you what LUTs are, how they can improve your images, how to use them, and what to avoid. Plus, I'll show you how to create a custom LUT. A LUT, a lookup table, is a numeric table that converts colors generally without requiring rendering. There are 1D and 3D LUTs. A 1D LUT converts colors on one axis, generally midtones. A 3D LUT converts colors on three axes, hue, saturation, and luminance. 1D LUTs are simple. 3D LUTs are much more powerful and much more effective. Final Cut supports LUTs that end with a .cube extension. This is the same format of LUT that Resolve requires. LUTs don't fix focus or exposure or content problems. All LUTs do is change colors. I have a color that was recorded by the camera called the input color. Let's call it blue. It has a number 5 associated with it. I want to change that number 5 and make it a green. So I have a lookup table. On the left-hand column, lists 1 through 10. The number 5 says go to 17. 17 happens to be green. So what's happening is that, is that image is displayed, the lookup table that the computer refers to, that says, how do I display that color, looks up the source number, recorded by the camera, finds the display number, recorded by the lookup table, and displays the color. All it's doing is mapping colors. It may be mapping colors from HDR to SDR, or from a normal shot to a, a deeply lit coal bin shot. For best results, only use the custom LUT effect, not the camera LUT. I'll show you why in just a second. And you can even create custom LUTs in Photoshop or other software. And I'll show that to you as well. This is shot on a Panasonic EV-1A. It was shot in HDR using the HLG ramp. And like all HDR log footage, it's log, uh, it's got a gray look to it. If I select the clip, and go to the video inspector, something that's new down here is called Color Conform. What Color Conform does is it maps the pixels. It's like a specialized form of a lookup table that converts the pixels from what the camera shot to what the project requires. This is an SDR project. So notice that it's converting from HDR, HLG, to SDR automatically without me having to make any changes to it. As it looks at this, you can convert SDR to HDR or HDR HLG or PQ to SDR or PQ to HLG or HLG to PQ. What I have found is I get the most successful results, believe it or not, by just leaving this set to automatic and it works fine. It's very much like spatial conform. You know how spatial conform will automatically size a picture so it fits inside the frame? Well, Color Conform does the exact same thing with color. It sizes the colors so it fits your project. So it's still washed out, yes, but it's within shouting distance of an SDR project, which means now we can apply a LUT. So one way we could do this is to go up to the Info Inspector and set it to General by going down to the low left corner. Basic is the default, but it doesn't have the information we need, and set it to General. When we do, a new menu choice shows up called Camera LUT, and these are LUTs which are provided by the camera manufacturers to properly map the picture to Final Cut. And this was shot with a Panasonic using V-Log, so I click it and watch the scope when I do so. We'll change the Camera LUT from None to Panasonic V-Log in 2, 1, woof. Oh, that's pretty awful. It clipped all the highlights and, I mean, there's, um, there's nothing good that can be said about that. In point, in point of fact, the camera LUT, to all intents and purposes, doesn't work. So don't even bother using the camera LUT. Set that to none. There's a better option. The better option is to go to the Effects browser, go to Color, and look for an effect called the Custom LUT. What Custom LUT allows you to do is to apply any LUT that you want, not just a camera LUT, but any LUT, to a clip. So I select the clip, and we'll just hide that for a moment. And notice that now Custom LUT appears up here. The benefit is that the best way to work with a LUT is to have it be the last stage, all the way at the bottom of the inspector. With a 
camera LUT, it processes first before anything else. With the custom LUT, you can position it to process wherever you want, but generally last is best. So I went to the Panasonic website. And Panasonic has a whole bunch of cube LUTs that work with Vericams and EVA1s, just like Sony does, just like Canon does, just like all the other camera manufacturers. And I downloaded a bunch of LUTs. For instance, here, high contrast. Whoa! What it did is it took out all the color, made it black and white, and made it really contrasty. And the reason it has to render is not because I've applied the LUT, it's because I've squeezed the 4K shot into a 720 timeline. Well, let's try something different. Let's try, let's try Blue Dusk. Whoa. All I'm doing is taking the, the pixel numbers that were recorded by the camera, running them through a lookup table, and coming up with new numbers. And those are the ones that get displayed. Because remember, a color is defined as three numbers, grayscale, uh, saturation, and hue. Let's try one more. Let's try golden. Now here, okay, I've got this. It's a little bit hot. What happens if I now go to and add a color correction? And let's add the color board. And let's pull the highlights down. Okay, we're pulling the highlights down. Let's pull the mids down a bit. That, Larry, is saturation. Will you pay attention to what you're doing? Pull the highlights down. There we go. Pull the mids down. Just because it's easy to use doesn't mean the operator is very bright. Okay, we can tweak that. Then when I go back here, you want to make sure that the custom LUT is located below the color correction. Just double click here, switch into the color board, pull that up or down. That's kind of nice. So I have found it most successful to have the custom LUT be at the bottom and other effects at the top. Now you can't put it below this stuff. That just processes, Apple decides it's going to process. But at the stacking order, just like you want broadcast safe at the bottom, put custom LUT at the bottom. If you're using broadcast safe and the custom LUT, make it custom LUT, then broadcast safe at the very bottom. What happens if I don't want this? I, I, want, I, want, something, I want something cooler. I want to have the cliffs here. I want that to be a nice rich brown and I want to really emphasize how blue the water is and I also want to have it I want to have it exposed properly. Well I can create what's called a custom LUT. To do that let's go to file, share, save current frame. I'm going to save it as a save it as a PNG. Click next and we'll call this beach scene and save it to the desktop. Done. Hide that, open up Photoshop, and grab Beach Scene and drag it in. We can create custom LUTs inside Photoshop. To do that, select the layer, go to Layer, New, and set it to a background. It's got to be locked. Now let's add an adjustment layer. I'm going to add a photo filter, and I'm going to have it be a warming filter, and let's really warm that puppy up. Let's make it nice. Oh, look at how brown that's gotten. Okay, we'll leave it right about there. That's really good. Except I only want it to apply to the ground, the darker section. So I'm going to right mouse click on here, select blending options. And on the underlying layer, I only want this filter to apply to the darker sections here. See how... Notice now the water's brown, but because the water and sky are highlights, I can exclude those. So I'm going to just drag that so it just applies to the dark. Let's add another adjustment layer, another photo filter. And this time I'm going to have it be blue, and it's going to be really blue. We'll have the sky glow and the water glow, but it's made the ground blue. Right mouse click, blending option. And this time I only want it to apply to the lighter sections. So I'm going to find the spot where the ground is not blue, but the water and sky stay blue, and click OK. And now I need to get the the grayscale to work. So let's apply one more levels. And we're used to this setting here inside Photoshop, and we'll just open that up just a bit. Right about there. 
And now I've got, hmm, I've got that all set. So I select the three adjustment layers, not the background, just the three adjustment layers. Go up to File, go down to Export, and look at that, Color Lookup Table. Leave all the settings alone. Notice it's saving in cube format. Leave the medium alone. Just give this colorful beach and click OK. And I'm going to take out the word. I'll just leave the word lot there because it's going to get replaced. Click Save. And there is our beach scene cube right there. We'll hide Photoshop. Go back to Final Cut apply the custom LUT there select custom LUT and choose the custom LUT go to the desktop beach scene cube open and look at that look at that it gives me blue water and brown ground the power of a LUT is that you can dial in your own look in ways that you can't do just by dragging the color wheels around or the, the border on because you're actually remapping, remapping colors in new and unusual ways. So we can make skin tones look natural and we can do all kinds of manipulation using the color wheels. But if you really want to make changes, start to play with a lot. And all you're doing is changing colors. And to get rid of it, to get rid of it is as easy as simply turning off the custom LUT and you're back to square one. And now I can go up to here. All right, what's wrong with this? Well, the black levels are too high. We'll pull the black levels down. And the mid-tones are washed out. Let's just open that up a bit right there. Pull the black levels down some more. Highlights right about there. And let's just add just a bit of blue, make it a bit bluer. And now I can manually color correct that because Color Conform already brought that log footage in a way to my SDR timeline that I can manipulate using the color wheels. Some very, very powerful new tools available to us for color in Final Cut. This was an excerpt of a recent Power Up webinar covering the color tools inside Apple Final Cut Pro. For the complete version of this online training, please visit my store, at LarryJordan.com slash store and look for Webinar 354. By the way, when you need to stretch your training dollars, membership in our video training library saves you money and time. You can access all our videos for a low monthly price of only $19.99. That's almost 2,000 movies, hundreds of hours on a wide variety of subjects. Plus, premium members can download practice media and projects. Our training covers Apple and Adobe software. We update it multiple times each month. And for more information, visit LarryJordan.com slash membership. And thanks.